Good morning and welcome to Rotten Dean. And uh, there's only really one topic to talk about at the moment, isn't there? I'm getting really frustrated because I don't know about you guys, but every single time someone from our government, the UK government, comes on TV and wants to talk about Russia and what's going on, I just can't take them seriously. I just None of their words hold any weight or any value when we know what we know. And it's so frustrating because I want to take, I want to try and find out every single bit of information that I possibly can about what's going on. But whenever someone from our government comes on TV to talk about it, I can't take a single word on board. I have to switch off. Because when you know what we know, and you know, like I said in the previous video, that the Tory party is absolutely swamped with Russian money, Russian donation, no, Russian donations to the eyeballs. How can you take a single word of what they're saying seriously? And, you know, they, they come out and talk about sanctions. Great, put, put massive sanctions on, on Russia. But all the time, Europe is relying on Russian gas. How, how can you do anything? And in this regard, I'm not just talking about the UK here, I'm talking about Europe. Most of Europe relies on, on Russian gas. Austria, some of the Scandinavian countries, we all rely on this Russian gas. It's, it, it, it's mental. It's, it's absolutely mental. When in history have we ever had a situation where we're at war with someone? I mean, I know we're not technically at war with someone, but our close ally Ukraine is at war with Russia. When in history has there been a situation when you're at war with someone, but you're paying them $700 million a day for their gas? <laughs> you're, you're at war with them, but you're paying them $700 million a day for their gas. Right, war with Russia, we're doing this. Europe, you got our backs, right? Yeah, yeah, we got your backs, don't worry, we got your backs. You ain't like, you know, doing any dodgy stuff, are you? No, no dodgy stuff. What about the, the, the gas and that? You, you giving them money for gas? Well, yeah, we are, we are giving them money for gas. How much are you giving them? Seven hundred million. <laughs> Seven hundred million. Seven hundred million. <laughs> what a year? No, a day. A day. You're giving the Russians seven hundred million a day. That's like our whole defence budget for an entire year. Why are you giving it seven hundred million a day? <laughs> I just. I've said this many a times, and I know that majority of politicians and political parties are obviously only there for their own interests but how can we not have governments that just try and do what's best for our countries we're paying them to foremost absolute foremost defend a country defend our country from foreign attack that is the, like number one priority of any government and they've known this. I mean, bloody hell, how long ago was the annex of Crimea 2014 with the problems in Ukraine and the Russian troops coming in? You know, we've had like eight years to wean ourselves off of Russian gas. We've known that they're, that, <laughs> that they're up to something. We pay you guys in government to do this. This is number one. And it's just mental that we have done nothing and in, in some regards even gone in opposite direction. And I'm not even just talking about the UK here, I'm talking about Europe as a whole. Why have we not weaned ourselves off of ga Russian gas? I've got, I've got a stat here, I, I'm, I saw it the other day, I'll try and find it and, and whack it up on, on screen. But look at this, look at this, you know, Austria, uh, you've got your Scandinavian countries there, Italy, Germany, we all, we all need Russian gas. And I think in some regards, when, you know, we've weaned ourselves off of coal and, and, and nuclear, rightly so, of course, um, but we've taken even more gas. For, how did we not see this coming? And this, this is what amazes me about the whole situation. It really does. I just, I just can't get my head around how being energy sufficient in all these countries has not been priority number one for the last eight years since the annexation of Crimea. It, it, it just seems mental to me and we tried in this country, you know, I mean, it's, um, 
fascinated to see the UK actually quite low down in that, that graph. I thought we were a lot more reliant on, on gas. I know we've been using it a lot for our, our electricity use. Um, but seriously, and anyone that is against wind farms now can, can go and fuck themselves. They really can. And it doesn't surprise me that Nigel Farage is one of the big ones for those. <laughs> I'm sure his Russian money is uh, is making a point there. But come on, just just put wind farms anywhere. I don't care. I don't give a shit if you think they're ugly. What would you rather have? Be dependent on Russians? Gas for... <laughs> Just put wind farms anywhere, anywhere you can. Just whack them up because we've got to stop being dependent on on Russian energy. It's just absolute madness, and this the, the insanity of this this whole war right now. The, the Russians have got us bent over. I mean, how can we do anything about it? So as soon as we want to do something stronger, just cut off the gas. <laughs> We're screwed. <laughs> how can? Yeah, it's mental. It's mental. But. Yeah. I, I have there's a lot more people out there that have a lot more knowledge about this and uh, as always this is my opinion with my simple van driver's hat on tr just trying to make sense of this whole situation and just this whole situation with energy just makes it completely an utter, utter madness I don't know how we can deal with something like this like I say never in history when in history have we ever been at war with someone and we're paying them 700 million a day at the same time it's madness Putin knows this and I mean to be honest with Putin I mean he's just he's come up to 70 now isn't it a lot of, a lot of people don't realise that I think this is just the he's like fuck it I'm, I'm dying soon isn't I? I've got to make a last stand I've got to think of my legacy everyone always thinks of these legacies don't they even down to like Obama and stuff you know what was my my legacy it was supposed to be Obamacare and now that's pretty shit anyway, all these presidents blair they want to think about their legacy and uh, that's exactly what putin's thinking of right now isn't he, he wants to because uh, no one's i guess before 2014 you know after the cold war no one really gave a shit about russia did they oh yeah they were there they used to be a superpower i guess putin uh, doesn't like that he needs the world to uh, stand up and pay attention but on a positive note you know i'm some i am seeing some great things in the media of civilians in the Ukraine fighting back and also the uh, I'm seeing a lot of Russian Russian soldiers just not really invested in this war when they turn up with their tanks expecting Nazis as they've been told by Putin Ukrainian Nazis on the border of Russia go fight those Nazis yeah I remember the Nazis they're evil weren't they and they turn up and it's a bunch of Ukrainian old ladies just bringing their shopping home it doesn't, doesn't do much for the uh, <laughs> the whole mentality of the Russian soldiers there, does it? Anyway, I can babble on forever, but I just I just want your guys' opinion on this Russian energy thing, because I just I can't get my head around it. How, how can we ever ever help out the situation of what's going on in Ukraine when we're constantly giving seven hundred million dollars a day to the Russians? Madness. Absolute madness. Till next time guys. Take care.